Okay, we'll, begin, we'll do the Mangala Charanam. Do you devotees know the whole thing? Can you do the whole Mangala Charanam? If you have the song books, you can do it, but without the song books, I don't think so. <coughs> Should we do the whole thing? It's, the prayers are so beautiful. Okay, we can start. Om Agyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chaksu Unbilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Staptitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kedamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Bande ham shi guru shi yuta padekamalam shi guru vaishnavam scha shi ham sagrajatam sahagana ragana tam vitam tam sajiva advaitam sarvadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitamscha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pastyatya De Satarine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shrimakti Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Iti Namine Sri Varsha Banabhi Devi Dayitaya Kripabdaye Krishna Sambandha Figyanam Daine Prabhave Namaha Madur Ojwala Premadya Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da Sri Gaura Karuna Shakti Vigrahaya Namostate Namaste Gauravani Sri Murtaye Dinatarine Rupanuga Rivurapa Siddhanta Dvanta Harine Namo Gaudaki Shoraya Saksad Vairagya Murtaye Vipralamba Sambo De Padambo Jaya Te Namaha Namo Bhakti Venodaya Sachidananda Namine Gauda Shakti Varsurupaya Rupanuga Parayate Gauda Vibhava Bhumestvam Nirdisesa Sajanapriyam Vaishnavara Sarabhoma Sri Jagannathayate Namaha Panchakalpa Taru Vischa Kripa Sindhu Paevacha Patitanam Bhavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Namo Mahavadanaya Krishna Prema Padayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namadi Gauda Chiste Namaha Pancha Tattva Makam Krishnam Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Avataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Chagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Jayatam Surato Pangor Mamamando Matir Gati Matsarvasya Tvarambo Jo Radha Madana Mohano Divya Rinda Kalpa Druma Sri Ratna Ratnagars Sri Sri Radha Govinda Devo Pristali B. Savyamanam Smarami Srimad Rasara Sarambi Vamsivata Tatastitaha Karsan Venu Tutar Gopi Gopinata Taste Nunamaha Taptakanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavane Swari Vrishavanu Suti Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Trupasya Kripa Sindhu Vaibhya Patitana Pavane Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namaho Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So that's Mangala Charanam by Srila Prabhupada. That is the order that Prabhupada chants it in like that. Okay, so um, we haven't heard much about Dhammadar lately. 
aside from the fact that we are singing the pastime uh, glorification every night. So I think I'll just mention a little bit of the pastime. I'll pick up from one point of the pastime, which is quite interesting. Um, and that is, after Krishna was tied up onto the grinding mortar, he ran with the grinding mortar between the two trees. And the two trees crashed to the ground. The grinding mortar st stuck between the trees, pulled these huge, gigantic trees. These trees were so huge that people could see them from any part of Vrindavan. They were so high and also very big. They came crashing onto the ground. When they hit the, the, the trees crashed to the ground, everyone started to experience great anxiety and fear, confusion and bewilderment, not knowing what had happened. And some people were thinking, oh no, looks like Putana and Trinavarta have come back in their ghost forms to haunt us after being killed by Krishna. Others were saying, no, 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 I think it's just the, the enemy soldiers are coming to attack us. Others were saying, no, no, it's actually Inder is throwing his thunderbolt. But there was no clouds in the sky and no rain. So that didn't work. So after guessing, nobody could understand what was happening. Meanwhile, when these two trees crashed, and two effulgence personalities, Nalakuvara and Manigriva, came out. They had a dialogue with Krishna. Krishna blessed them. They offered their prayers, obeisances, and glorifications of the Supreme Lord and were blessed to return back to their abode in the, in the heavenly planets to take up their position again as demigods after being punished to stand in the trees for many, uh, many, many years, hundreds of years. So now Krishna is lying between the two trees and uh, everybody's wondering, was that sound? Decides, what am I going to do now? He's still tied up. He takes the grinding rope, pure stone, with a wooden frame, and he just pushes it with his feet, and it rolls, and then he pulls it back with the rope, and he rolls again. He's just kind of playing with the grinding mortar, <laughs> not knowing what to do. <laughs> so then he decides, let me call my friends. So he calls his friends. Kinkini, Sudam, you know, Vasudam, uh, and uh, Sridam, and they all come running. Oh, Krishna, 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 what happened? I don't know. We saw, we saw these two effulgent personalities come out of the trees and then they were gone. <laughs> Krishna said, never mind. <laughs> so then they start joking. And now, and Krishna, and then the cowherd boys were just laughing and having fun, and Krishna was laughing and having fun. And so then the cowherd boys changed their mood. They said, Krishna, you destroyed these two trees, and now you're in trouble. You were in trouble before for stealing butter, and your mother tied you up. Now she's going to tie you to a mountain. <laughs> Krishna said, Mountain, wait, wait in the future. I, I actually lift mountains, he said. <laughs> You'll see. <I'll laughs> so he gave a little hint of his upcoming pastime. <laughs> so now the cowherd boys are joking. And then, of course, now the residents in Vrindavan from different places, the gopis come running, and they go immediately to run Mother Yasoda and say, Mother Yasoda, this is really, you know, Krishna's... We know that Krishna is right by those trees and it looks like the trees fell on Krishna. Oh my God, when Mother Yasoda heard that, she just lost caution, and just completely collapsed on the floor. After some time she came back. They said, well, maybe he's not hurt. Anyway, she was trying to go to the place and she was kind of tears in her eyes, couldn't see which way to go. The gopis were trying to lead her to the right path. Meantime, the cowherd women, also looking for their sons, came 
And the cowherd men, they decided that this must be a war going on because that sound was so tumultuous. There must be, so they were armed with all kinds of weapons such as rakes and four pitchforks and <laughs> shovels. <laughs> you know, the weapons of the cowherds. <laughs> so everybody's coming to the sea now and people are looking and they can't see the trees anymore because these trees were so big that everybody could see them from a long distance. What happened to the Arjun trees? So they're all going to the, where they think the sound came from. So Krishna says, uh-oh, they're all coming, let's hide. So the trees had these big crowns on them with bushes, with a lot of leaves, and it was the perfect season for the, for the growth of the trees. So Krishna said, let's hide in the, inside the bushes, and no, they can't find us. <laughs> so Krishna went underneath the leaves along with his friends. And his friends, it says that as soon as his friends got near him, they started to experience ecstasy, and they start laughing. Because <laughs> when the cowherd boys experience ecstasy, they just laugh. <laughs> they, usually, they usually go, woo, woo, woo. Or they laugh, or they just make all kinds of strange sounds. <laughs> the gopis cry, but the cowherd boys laugh. <laughs> So the cowherd boys were laughing and feeling the, the presence of Krishna. But Krishna said, be quiet, they're coming. <laughs> Don't let them see us. <laughs> so everyone arrives at the scene, Mother Yasoda comes and everybody's there. Mananda Maharaj, he comes a little later. And the cowherd ladies are saying, you know, we don't see Krishna, but we don't even see our sons. What happened to our sons? They're gone too. And they start getting worried. What happened to our sons? So now everybody's worried. And Mother Yasoda, her love for Krishna is like full of anxiety now. And she, oh, she, she keeps crying and just wondering what's going on. Finally, Krishna says, oh, it's too much. So he stands up. <laughs> this is an important point in the whole Leela because Krishna tried to hide but he couldn't because his mother's love was so strong that it pulled him out of his hiding place. It says that Krishna can resist anything but pure love. And this is what it takes to capture Krishna. If your love is mixed with something else you still have some work to do. <laughs> that love has to be pure. That means you only want Krishna and nothing else. You become, when you can't live in this world anymore, and it's just impossible to live without Krishna, then you're ready to go back to Godhead. When you see everything in this world as useless and void, has no meaning, you, it's just, you can't eat because it doesn't, it doesn't satisfy you. Everybody you look at looks like somebody, some stranger. <laughs> Nothing makes sense anymore. So when you get to that stage where it's just too much, then you're ready to go back to Godhead. So if you haven't reached that stage yet, don't, don't worry. Because <laughs> this is what it takes, complete detachment from everything in this world and complete attachment to Krishna. And then Krishna immediately pulls you back to him and he says, your love for me is now where... It was many, many billions of years ago. <laughs> and so now Krishna comes out and he's standing there and his friends also come up and they're just standing, Krishna's standing there nonchalantly. And he's just kind of like indifferent to what's going on. <laughs> and everybody's seeing, Krishna's seeing, they're all seeing Krishna, they're seeing the cowherd boys. And the cowherd men are wondering, what happened? What was that? What, what fell these two gigantic trees? So the cowherd board starts saying, well, actually, it was Krishna. And then they told the whole story about him running and the trees and with the mortar. And then two effulgent personalities came out. And they offered prayers to Krishna. And then some, one of the boys says, the mortar was dancing on the ground. And so the, some of the cowherd boys, men, some of the cowherd men were thinking, hmm, these kids are just, you know, making up stories. 
But then some of them thought, well, you know, we remember what Garga Muni said about this boy Krishna. They can remember the prophecy that he's actually as good as Narayan, so maybe these stories are true. <laughs> so they started to think like that. So then they're describing it. <clears throat> and finally, finally, Mother Yasoda, she can't take it anymore. And she's just crying, crying, crying. And Krishna doesn't want to go near his mother because he's mad at her. Because <laughs> she, she tied him up. If Rohini wasn't, it was there, she wouldn't have been able to tie him up. If Nanda Maharaj was there, she wouldn't have been able to tie him up. But she did it somehow. And Krishna allowed it. But Krishna wasn't so pleased. He wasn't happy with his mother. So he wasn't ready to run back to his mother. And she's just there lamenting. Now Nanda Maharaj comes and then he takes Krishna, puts him on his lap. Those of you who are falling asleep, I can understand this class is quite boring. <laughs> don't worry, I can see everybody, so don't try to hide. If you want to sleep, sleep with your eyes open so you, you don't get caught. <laughs> And so, now Nanda Maharaj comes and he immediately unties Krishna. Krishna jumps up on his lap and Krishna is so half happy to be with his father. His father is also thinking, what did my wife do? <laughs> she tied this boy up. And that's not right. He would have never did that. And then she, he was thinking, how could she do that? And Krishna was feeling the same way. How could she do that to me? <laughs> So then, of course, <clears throat> and then finally, after some time, you know, Krishna forgives his mother on the encouragement of his father, and then they're back together. But the cowherd men are thinking, you know, what is this? We were in, uh, we were in Nandagram, and we had deep problems with demons. Now we move to Madhavan, Gokul. They were in Gokul Madhavan at the time. And there's more demons here. And there's so many disturbances. So Upananda, he's the head of all the cowherd men. He's the five, uh, eldest brother of Nanda Maharaj. And he's the most wise and the most intelligent of all. So he decides to call a meeting of all the leading cowherd men of the village. And so they have a meeting. They say, well, I think we should, you know, move again. This place is also full of disturbances. So let's go to Vrindavan, which was a place in between Nandagram and Madhavan. So they thought, that's a nice place. There's beautiful forest there. It's much quieter and more peaceful there. So let's go. So they all made a decision, and everybody unanimously agreed. And then they immediately start packing all their wares onto, onto uh, bullock carts, and then everyone's ready to go. This is the next day. So now, Krishna and Balaram, they don't want to be separated from each other. They don't want to go with their mothers. Usually they, each one would go with each mother. But this time they wanted to be together. So they sat on the same cart together because of their love for each other. And so then the two ladies, who are the mothers, they decided, well, if our sons are going to sit together, we should sit with them. <laughs> So the two ladies came onto the cart and then put both of the boys on their, each of their lap and then the procession proceeded on to Vrindavan. Finally they got there with all their wagons and their carts and bullocks and cows. They made a half circle and then behind the half circle on the back part they put all their, all their possessions and they left the open part so the cows could go in and out. So the cows were coming in and out like that. So now they're settled in this new place. And so Krishna's happy. And the next day he's playing. And when he's playing, he's with his friends, and Balaram is there. He sees this funny-looking cowherd boy. Hmm, who is that cowherd boy? It doesn't look like a cowherd boy to me. <laughs> No, I mean, I'm sorry, it wasn't, no, I was, I'm sorry, it wasn't a cow. It was a calf. It was a funny-looking calf. 
And so Krishna thought, it's a demon. <laughs> so he came over, grabbed his hind legs and his tail and swirled them around, gave him a ride. And then during the ride, he did, the, the, cow, the calf exited his body. <laughs> he died. Hari bo. <laughs> the bodies are happy when demons are killed. <laughs> so he died. And then Krishna, Krishna killed that. Uh, and then he, he attained his form as a demon. So that was Vatsasura. And then after some time, he's playing again. And so the, him and Balaram, they decide to go down to this little lake that's down there. It's kind of like a pond. And they take all their friends. And when they get to the f pond, they see that there's uh, so much fresh water for drinking, so they're all satisfying their thirst and feeling satisfied. But they see that there's this big, gigantic body laying right next to the water. What is that? It's a duck. <laughs> a big duck. So Krishna says, a duck? What? And then the duck gets up, and it's a demon. <laughs> The duck demon. <laughs> so you better duck because the demon's coming. No, that's another thing. And so the demon charges at Krishna and he swallows Krishna. And Krishna's in the mouth and all the cowherd boys, even Balaram didn't do nothing, do anything. Balaram was, was crying. Krishna got caught by this demon. A duck! <laughs> and so Krishna decided to become a throat lozenger for the duck. So, but it was a different kind of throat lozenger. Not that it cooled his throat; it made his. It was more like a chili. <laughs> so he became as hot as possible, and uh, the demon couldn't hold him anymore. So he spit him out. Boom! There goes Krishna flying out of the the the, uh, the duck's mouth. And now Krishna says, "Well, that time's up on this planet." So now he comes up to the duck and grabs him by the beak and just pulls his beak apart so the duck splits right in half. Honey, Bo, Krishna really, when he kills demons, it's really exciting how he does it, you know. He, he just doesn't punch him. It's a gory mess, you know. He easy tears them apart, rips them in half, cuts, cuts off all their heads, or, you know, destroys them in so many interesting ways. <laughs> And then they attained Saruja Mukti liberation. So this duck was killed. And that was uh, Bakasura. So Krishna killed him. So they all, after moving from Nandagram to Goku Madhava, then they moved to Vrindavan. After moving to Vrindavan, more demons. <laughs> Couldn't get away from the demons. Just like us, we're trying to get away from the demons. They can't. They say, you're locked down, you got COVID, you can't go out. Six o'clock in the morning, if we catch you before then, we put you in jail. Nine o'clock at night, we're out here. We're going to give you a fine, take your money, so you can't spend it on what you like to spend it on. <laughs> so this is, we're also in a demoniac society. <laughs> in some places, they make you wear these funny looking things called masks. <laughs> So you can't breathe, and when you can't breathe, they, that's good because then you can die faster, and that's the whole program. <laughs> I'll tell you a nice, interesting story about faith in Krishna. Here's a, here's a, here's a really amazing story. It's not too long, it's just very short, but it shows uh, there was one, this happened about within the last month. I got this report from this one devotee who does prison preaching. He sent me this report. He said it was this one boy. He was in one jail, and he got he got coronavirus. And so he he asked for medical help. They gave him none. He asked for some assistance. They gave him none. They put him in isolation by himself without any help. Now he's got. Severe case of severe case of coronavirus with no medical help or treatment. They wanted him to die, basically. And that's what it is like in jail sometimes. It's one less person to worry about. So, um, but what he did, 
Is he just, he had some contact with devotees before that and he was, you know, developing his Krishna consciousness. So he just started to pray to Krishna for with all his heart and started to chant. And he just kept chanting and praying. And after some, uh, some time, the, the virus was completely gone. Without any medical treatment, without any care at all. His faith in devotional service became so strong and now he's just fixed in devotional service. Krishna saved him directly without anything. Sometimes we need Krishna's mercy and medical care at the same time, but he just had Krishna's mercy. But the strength of his prayers and the enthusiasm of his chanting brought Krishna's special mercy and saved his life. <laughs> and he became completely healed. There was no sign of anything. This was amazing. So I just thought I'd bring that story up just to show you the power of Krishna consciousness and the power of faith. Uh, when the more faith we have in, devo in Krishna and in devotional life, the more Krishna is there for us in, in every and all aspects of our life. Okay, so this is some little pastimes I thought you might be interested in. I know there's no questions, but I'll just ask anyway. <laughs> Any by chance, anyone has a question or a comment? I have two hopes. One is Nanda Vardhanam and the other one is uh, Danilu. These are the only two will, possibilities that questions will <laughs> Without them, there's no hope. <laughs> okay. Is this story from Garga Sanhita? Because I didn't hear everything. This story was, uh, I read this in uh, Sri Damodar Janani. Mm. It's in Damodar Janani. The part where Krishna is, uh, you know, where the part with the the two ducks, the two demons, that's the Bhagavatam. Mm. So before then is uh, Dhammadar Janani. So that's uh, Shiva Ram Maharaj's. Uh, you know, he goes through various scriptures and finds the different pastimes and puts it all together into a complete, mm. you know, scenario like that. So it could be from, it's a good chance it's from Garga Samhita. In fact, I think you're right. I think the reference is Garga Samhita. He gave three references for that pastime. And one was Garga Samhita, the other two I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, those of you, Garga Samhita is full of Krishna's wonderful leelas. Like that. Okay. Okay, your turn. <laughs> huh? Okay. Okay. So, yes. Oh, wow. One of the Panchatattvas came along. Das, <laughs> das. Hare Krishna. Uh, so, with killing of Vatsasura, uh, I think there was also a similar situation as with Arishta Sura that the gopis accused Krishna of killing a cow and that he had to purify himself. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, Arishta Sura, the bull. And that's the story of uh, Radhakund and Shambhakund. We just spoke that pastime, at, I think, about a week ago or so. So, yeah, but how, Krishna, he is... Um, he is, uh, what is the word? There's a, there's a Sanskrit aphorism that describes Krishna. He's, um, he's, he's pure. He cannot become unpure. Anything unpure that comes in contact with Krishna becomes pure. So how can Krishna actually become unpure in any way? Because everything becomes pure in relationship to Krishna. 
So that was a pastime in order to uh, bring about the pres presence of Radhakun and Shavakun. So now he killed the calf too. <laughs> we have to see if there was any reactions on that level. I don't know. <laughs> That's worse than killing a bull. <laughs> Okay, any of the other panchatattvas out here? <laughs> any gopis? No gopis? <laughs> okay. All right, so we'll uh, end. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sivasati Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Srila Prabhupada Ki Dai.